Hey you guys, welcome aboard Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy, and in this video, we're gonna talk about mold. You know, you wouldn't think this would be a topic that was debated much, but it actually is. A lot of people think, you know, hermit crabs are going to encounter mold in the wild, and so why is it a big deal in their crab habitat? Well, you guys, this is the big difference. Yes, they're going to come across mold and spores and things like that in their environment in the wild. However, that is not a closed environment like our tanks are. Our tanks are completely sealed. Maybe a little hole here or there where your tubing is coming in or something like that. But for the most part, a crab habitat needs to be completely sealed in order to have the proper heat and humidity. Well, when you introduce something like mold and mold spores, that can really cause a lot of issues, even with hermit crabs, not to mention you, the care keeper, and the house in which your tank sits. So debate all you want, but truly you guys, mold is not something you want in your crab habitat. It's not something you want for your hermit crabs. It's not something you want in your house or that you want for yourself as you're working in your tank. We are going to link below a great resource for you guys to read if you really wanna get in depth about what it is about mold that's not good, especially within a closed environment like our um, crab tanks are. And so check that out if you want some science informa sciencey information. Um, but going forward in this video, we are gonna talk about how to keep mold out of your tank and what to do if mold is introduced within your tank. All right, let's talk about some ways to prevent mold from even occurring within your crab habitat. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is the foundation of what our crab habitats are made out of, and that's the substrate itself. It's the largest part of what goes into your crab habitat, and it is so important to get that right at the beginning. Um, we have a video and we're going to link it in the iCard for you guys about how to get your substrate just right as you're setting up your crab habitat. But I'm just going to hit the basics here. That is that you need to have a five to one ratio of play sand, that's five parts play sand, to one part eco earth. And you want to set up your tank with dry substrate to start out with. Remember that your tank is completely sealed and you're creating a high humidity environment. So that means you will consistently be having this moisture in your air getting into the substrate, which will then create the perfect sandcastle consistency. And you have the pools in there that are helping your, your crabs carry shell water. That helps as they go under and dig in the sand. They use that water to create molt tunnels and molt caves again, carrying more hydration um, and water into that substrate. So you definitely want to start out with your dry substrate and you definitely want to make sure that you have the correct ratio. If you have 100% eco worth, you guys, you are probably going to experience a lot of issues with mold and quite frankly, bugs. So um, e that's what eco worth really is, is used for. It, it holds moisture. That's actually why we put it in our substrate. The one part of Eco Earth is to help hold that moisture within the substrate. But too much of it holds too much moisture and too much moisture leads to mold. So that is why we do the five to one ratio, you guys. Um, again, check out that video if you are unsure about how to set up your substrate. All right, let's talk about humidity. This is kind of a tricky situation when we're thinking about mold and humidity in our crab habitat because you do need to provide a very humid environment for your hermit crab. We are looking to have a stable, consistent 75 to 85% humidity. Uh, make sure that you have a really good gauge. If you're using an analog gauge, I would suggest getting rid of that. They're just known for being inaccurate and instead invest in a good digital gauge and make sure that you calibrate it first. Getting accurate readings within your tank is going to be huge and very beneficial when it comes to regulating the humidity and keeping mold out of your tank. All right, so if you are having trouble with very high humidity, this would be consistently 
having humidity over 85%. Then you're at risk for mold within your substrate. You're probably seeing mold on the food in your dishes pretty regularly and potentially even on some of the decor items within your tank. To avoid this, you guys, you have to get that humidity under control. We have a video on that will give you tips and tricks on how to raise or lower heat and humidity actually within your tank um, because those two things do go hand in hand. And so that should be able to help you out. Again, we'll link it in the end card for you guys so that you can watch that video if you need. But just to let you know, if you are seeing a lot of condensation on your tank, you always wanna make sure that you're wiping that off because it will run down the glass of your tank into your substrate and oversaturate it. Another thing to keep in mind is the size of your pool compared to the size of your tank. I know for me, I had a tank set up at my school. I'm a teacher um, and I, I had a tank in my classroom where I set up pools that were really too big for the size tank that I had. And so I was constantly fighting high humidity, condensation, and eventually my substrate became too saturated and flooded. Um, and I was always having moldy food um, and my decor items were growing like fuzzy white mold on it and things like that. So if you're having that problem, it could be that your pools potentially um, are too big for the size tank that you have. Speaking of condensation, it's kind of normal to have that, especially in the evening, our house cools down a little bit, but the heat of the tank stays the same. And so a lot of times you'll get some condensation a little bit now and then, especially maybe season changes or that sort of thing isn't a problem. But if you are having condensation on a daily basis, then you need to either increase your heat or you need to insulate your tank. Um, always wipe the condensation off, even if it just seems like a little bit, you guys, a little every day over time will saturate your substrate and cause mold problems. So um, insulating your tank, if you, um, you can cover it with a blanket, you can get a car shade. Um, that is also in our heat and humidity video. It talks about insulating your tank. It gives you ideas. We even have links in that video. So make sure that you guys look at that if you're having that problem. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is food. So a lot of times we'll get questions about, you know, why, why is my food molding? I just put it in last night and that sort of thing. First of all, if you are feeding fresh foods from your refrigerator, um, your freezer, those will mold quickly, uh, particularly strawberries. It seems like those will mold in hours. Um, and so you do have to remove fresh food and fruits um, and vegetables from your tank 24 hours later always just you know fresh food needs to be removed from your tank or it will get moldy regardless of all these other tips that we're talking about now if you have dehydrated foods um, that are molding quickly then your substrate is probably part of the issue and being too saturated which these other tips that we're talking about will definitely help you out with that but we have also found that it is very helpful to raise your food dish up off the substrate um, we have We've tried several different things. We have just a little piece of wood that we set the dish on top of. Um, you could build a little platform that has a ladder using light filter or um, you know, just different ways of creating levels within your tank and the food could be on a second level. So there, you could take a dish and turn it upside down and then set the food dish on top of that one. Just enough to get it off the substrate. It doesn't even have to be a lot. Um, that seems to really help slow down the mold growth within the food dish. But again, if it's happening a lot in your tank, then there's probably a bigger problem within your substrate. So um, look at fixing those issues. All right, the last thing that I wanna talk about in preventing mold is the size of your tank. So the recommendation is 10 gallons per crab, and that's for safety in molting. Um, however, I can tell you from experience, when we had our smaller tanks, especially our first tank, it was 29 gallon tall we fought with keeping consistent heat and humidity anytime the weather changed outside our tank changed inside and so we were always having to use those tips and tricks that i've been talking about um, in raising the heat or raising the humidity dropping the heat or dropping the humidity depending on the weather outside and so it became really frustrating at times for us i could say is you know if you can if you're tired of, of the fluctuations in your small tank and you are able to upgrade, it has been a huge just time saver and frustration reliever to have a larger tank. Once you get um, closer into like the 55 gallon and above, you can really get those tanks a lot more stable 
and the weather outside doesn't seem to affect them as much and they recover a lot more quickly. And so that frustration level is just, just not quite there. Um, however, if that's not something you're able to do, it's totally fine. You can keep the smaller tanks. Just know that you will have to constantly work on your humidity levels and not keeping them overly high for an extended period of time, um, or you may start to find issues with mold in your substrate um, and on your decor and things like that. All right, now I just wanna talk about what if you have some decor items in your tank that have mold on them? What are you going to do? So first of all, um, go ahead and take them out of your tank and you're gonna want to scrub off that mold um, in some prime treated water and then let it soak in prime treated water for about 24 hours. After that, um, go, or you can even boil it actually. If you have a pot big enough or your decor item is small enough, um, I wouldn't boil plastics, that's easy enough to just wash. But a wood item or a cocoa hut or a lizard lounger, that the grass um, lounger things, those can be soaked um, and boiled to get rid of the, the mold spores. And then I would go ahead and put your oven on the lowest setting possible and place those items on a cookie sheet in the oven and let them stay in the oven until they are completely dry. And the heat of that oven will kill the extra um, spores that are left over. And it will also make sure that you're not reintroducing moisture into your tank um, and making sure that all those decor items are completely dry. Now, of course, this is a fire hazard because you're putting wood and grass items in a hot oven. So this is something that you want to be present in your house and watching and monitoring closely, um, just, just so that you guys are aware of that. And then after everything is completely dry and you reintroduce it to your tank, there's a couple of things to keep in mind, especially with the lizard loungers. Those things do tend to mold pretty quickly, especially in small tanks, again, because of the fluctuation in humidity. Um, and so we have found that to keep mold off of those it is best to keep them away from the pools and off the substrate completely. So we hang ours in the um, toppers of our tank or in the upper corner of a base tank. And then we use the ladders um, that go down from the lizard loungers into the substrate so that the crabs can climb up to those little loungers. Um, and then as far as wood and cocoa huts, if you can hang your cocoa huts, we've had the best luck with that. Although we do have several sitting on the substrate. Again, as long as you don't have saturated substrate, it shouldn't really lead to a whole lot of problems. Um, and same thing with the wood. We have uh, wood in our silicone and our toppers, but we have wood sitting directly on our substrate. And you guys, if you're just keeping the, the humidity in check, it really shouldn't be that big of a problem. Um, but now you know what to do in the case that it does grow mold, you don't have to throw it away. There is a way to sanitize it and then reintroduce it to your tank. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is what to do if you actually have mold in your substrate. If it's on the surface, you guys, you can just easily take a spoon and scoop out that little bit on the surface and that's no problem whatsoever. If the mold is actually in the substrate itself, then you are definitely gonna want to replace that substrate. Um, it's probably because it's too saturated and you need to set up your tank with dry substrate in the five to one ratio that we talked about at the beginning of this video. All right, you guys, I know none of us like mold in our crab habitat, and there's lots of questions about what to do if you find mold. I hope this video really does help you, first of all, prevent it from even happening in the first place. But if it does, I hope you feel confident in knowing what to do. As always, you guys, we so appreciate that you have come along on this journey with us here at Crab Central Station. If you haven't already, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel. And also, please follow us on our social medias where we share lives, videos, pictures, tips, and of course, advice to you guys as you ask questions. So follow us on all of those platforms over there. Thanks again, you guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.